And Professor Dershowitz joins us now. What's I'm sure quite flattering to hear the Prime Minister speak of you like that, Professor Dershowitz. But is it not a day Israelis can be proud of that a, a prime minister was brought to trial just like any other citizen would be brought to trial if he, fa if he went through an investigation and charges were brought against him? If he had committed a crime, it would be a day that Israel should be proud of. It will go down in history as a day on which Israel should be deeply ashamed. Israel is the first country in modern history ever to put a political leader on trial for trying to get good media coverage or trying to eliminate negative media coverage. The Knesset would never in a million years pass a statute making it a crime to try to obtain good media coverage, because if they did, half of the members of the Knesset would be in prison. So if you want to try people on these offenses, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, let the Knesset pass statutes. But what Israel's doing is using vague, open-ended, broad statutes in order to create new crimes that have never, ever been used in a democracy before. So yes, this case is unprecedented, but the important part of it is not it's unprecedented because the prime minister is on trial in Israel. It's unprecedented because the charges being brought against Netanyahu are not crimes. Are well, not Professor crimes Dershowitz, let me ask you if you, you murdered his crimes. The, we're, yeah. Of course, we're talking about different cases. In uh, the first case, 1000, the prime minister received expensive gifts from a wealthy business mm -hmm. in America, then intervened sure. to try to have that the, uh, the U.S. Secretary of State extend the visa for that businessman. Is that not uh, a, a crime, a, a case of fraud and breach no. of trust? Not at all. Let me tell you why. They don't charge quid pro quo because there was no quid pro quo. And if you want to make it a crime, let the Knesset say anything up to 10,000 shekels is OK, but 10,001 shekels is not OK. But you can't have a statute which leaves it up to the prosecution to decide how much is too much. It gives them too, discretion, too much discretion. It allows for selective prosecution. If you want to make it a crime, and many states in the United States have made it a crime, to accept more than $10,000, $1,000, set a number. And then if the number is exceeded, that's the end of it. But you can't make it a crime to say he took too much, especially when there's no specific allegation that in exchange for the specific money, he did illegal acts A, B, C, and D. So no, 1,000 fails. And Again, Israel should never have brought a criminal prosecution based on 1,000. 2,000 and 4,000 are different. I'm very familiar with Israeli law. I'm very familiar with these allegations. But, but Professor and Dershowitz, none of the three of them survive right. analysis. Professor Dershowitz, you, you say unprecedented for a, right. uh, a, a prime minister uh, be, uh, to be prosecuted because he tried to influence media coverage. But Prime Minister Netanyahu deliberately took on the post of a communications minister to personally make decisions regarding regulatory issues uh, in order in this arrangement with these uh, two uh, media uh, uh, figures. Isn't that a crime? If he wasn't going to commit a crime, why did he take on the post of communications minister? Well, there has to be a crime. You can't charge somebody with motive. People take on positions all the time in order to achieve both personal and national goals. But it can't be a crime to seek positive or avoid negative media coverage. If the Knesset wants to make that a crime, let them take a vote. I predict that the Knesset took a vote on making it a crime to get media, positive media coverage, it would not get a single vote, not a single vote. So here's my challenge. Let the Knesset pass a law. Let the Knesset debate the issue of whether or not seeking media coverage, even changing a position, seeking a position, if that could be proved, to get media coverage is a crime. The Knesset would vote no. And if the Knesset wouldn't pass such a law, how can a prosecutor create I, a crime? Professor Dershowitz, how can a judge pose a conviction right, on such I would a like crime you to stay, if the Knesset didn't pass it? Professor Dershowitz, we're going to go for a brief break. I do want to stay with you. I do want to point out in this last election, uh, the parties that supported giving prime minister immunity uh, openly had said that failed to get a majority in the Knesset, in the Israeli parliament. Well, what so does the vote, that have to do with? The voters did have a... What does that have to do with? Well, we could, we, could, we, could, we, could pick up, we, we certainly could pick up 
that issue, if you'd like, after the break. Okay. And we'll sp speak a little more, perhaps, about what legal advice at this stage you would offer Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So please, uh, Alan Dershowitz, stay with us, and we ask the viewers... Oh, to stay